This is about you. The infinite you. The part of you that can't be seen, can't be smelled, touched, or tasted. But you know you feel it. Who you really are. In a world lost to confusion, a universe that's partly illusion, when we look for meaning, we often simply find more delusion. Ground your consciousness in the sounds of the universe, a podcast about your true omnipotence. There's a universe inside each of us, but our beliefs keep us constrained to the edges of what we can imagine. The Innerverse Podcast is your portal to that infinite realm of ideas. I'm Chance Garden, and I'll be your host as we serve up inspirational sound waves from the brightest minds with the highest vibes. And we keep searching for the empowering perspectives we need to create our greatest masterpiece of all, our lives. Welcome to the one within all to another interverse. I'm your friend Chance, and it's my honor to connect with you beautiful souls of the internet for another deep dive down into the nitty gritty of new age gnosis and empowering esoteric wisdom. If there's one thing I've learned from evolving my consciousness and raising the higher perspectives of life is that with each elevation of energy, there's expansion into all directions, up, down, left, right, and even into dimensions unknown. And so with any form of self-realization, we come to find that not everything in the world appears as love and light, even if divine love is where we all come from. And in the physical world, there are conspiracies, controllers, and all-around uncool cats who have always sought to enslave and disempower others for their own ends. The upside to the duality dilemma is that once we realize all manifestations of form and energy are emanations from a singular, ineffable, and infinite source... We can transcend the limiters by finding where our own unbalanced behaviors and thoughts are connected to delusional dogmas and unhealthy understandings about life and make the shifts inside to course correct ourselves. Our returning guest today knows all about this never ending journey towards wholeness and has independently investigated holistic health sciences since 1965 when he was motivated by his own healing crisis to ditch the doctors and wise up to the ancient age reversal principles that our ancestors once recognized. His name is Richard Sachs, and he's the host of the internet radio show called Lost Arts Radio, where he interviews expert researchers in the fields of health, conspiracy, and any other area that may bring forth important information about how to thrive in this age of tremendous toxicity. Today, we'll be speaking more about the dilemmas of modern religions the conundrums of modern culture, and the nefarious agenda to exterminate all life on Earth. So as we proceed, I want you to remember that becoming aware of the darkness is a crucial test we must all pass, because if we can stay in unconditional love, even in the face of horrible fear, we have defeated death itself. And if you like Richard's vibe and Lost Arts Radio is your thing, you can go further with the research by enrolling in his Planetary Healing Club, a group where even more forbidden and esoteric knowledge about how your body really works is shared and experimentally explored. Check the show notes for links to Lost Arts Radio and Richard Sachs. And while you're there, you'll also find the link to Interverse Plus on Patreon, where you can get the member-exclusive second hour of this conversation and access to the growing archive of about 70 extended episodes. To all our subscribers out there, you know who you are, and I can't thank you enough for sending some energy towards Interverse. Without you all, the show definitely wouldn't be where it's at today, and it means a lot to have your support. Now it's time to sow the seeds of self-realization. With the holistic health headmaster himself, he's the adaptable aging reverser and devouted dark magic decursor, and I can't wait to dig in with him. Everyone, please join me in welcoming Richard Sachs back to the show. 
And thank you for being here with us, Richard. How's it going, man? Yeah, my pleasure. It's really nice to see you again. It feels like it's been a lot longer than it really has since we last did this. It may be because of the evolutions I've been going through and maybe the whole planet. But Mm -hmm. would you mind warming us up and reminding us about Lost Arts Radio and the Planetary Healing Club and maybe what's happened with that and evolved with that since we last spoke? Yeah, sure. Well, where it came from is that after I got into some serious health problems, I became an independent health scientist uh, doing experimental research on natural ways. Well, first to take care of what I needed to do for my own body. But after that, I was interested in ways of um, reversing aging and getting rid of degenerative disease and maximizing immunity without drugs and vaccines and poisons of various kinds, invasive things. And so I, I was working on that and that quickly led into areas of um, consciousness that I found were required in order to make lifestyle changes without a lot of resistance inside yourself. And um, eventually near the end of that period that started in the mid 60s, I realized I wanted to know more what was going on in the outside world. So in the last 20 years or so, I did a really in-depth investigation into the workings of the global power structure and um, what they intend to do, why all these different sub agendas are going on and how they fit together, where they're going and why and what the solutions might be. And that was all kind of under the radar until about five years ago, at which point I was um, acting temporarily as a co-host on a geoengineering radio program. And I was invited to do that by a guy named Dane Wigington, who's a researcher in that area and runs uh, geoengineeringwatch.org, which has a lot of information, mostly in terms of weather modification, but it's interesting. For anybody that's not sure whether the chemtrails are real, that's a good place to start. Or um, globalskywatch.com is another good one, and there are many others. And then I was going to disappear again after doing that for about eight months, and I was asked to do a health-related radio show, which I felt like would be unethical to say no. So Lost Arts Radio got started. And later, I guess at the beginning of 2018, I realized that part of it had to become private because of the things that people wanted to talk about in depth and make it interactive and start working on the deeper consciousness levels, which is what we're doing at this point. So that's where it's from. Can you tell us what are some of the changes in consciousness that are required to actually initiate the healing and get past the resistance itself? Well, there's two things that I I think, you know, I'm interested in doing with that. One is whatever consciousness changes make your own growth and healing on physical and other levels possible. But beyond that, having a pretty good picture of what's going on in the outside world right now, I'd like to know how we can best wake up our own abilities that we had a long time ago to change the course of world development. So I'm I'm really interested in doing that. So when you say the abilities we had a long time ago, you're referring to ourselves being our own ancestors in a reincarnation sense? Yeah, yeah, we've been around for a really long time. Well, indefinitely, actually, it, because the world's only been here for maybe 4 billion years or so, but we're a lot older than that, having come from the beginning. And I think that's the only place we're all going back to. So even the so-called bad people are going to end up at the same place as we will. They're the same as we are. They're just victims of different kind of programming. I think that I think that's a really good thing to bring to the forefront because we are going to i'm sure discuss a lot of what you'd call like conspiracy i wouldn't call it theory i would call it pretty much evidence and fact (laughs) Mm, but but that they are also part of the same higher self of humanity that we all extend out of and that they're victims of the same thing so where what is the what is a good origin point to look at for how this got started, like where did things first go wrong as far as humanity 
going from being in a balanced state and expressing our individual uniqueness as a as a whole and as a tribe to this sort of compartmentalized <laughs> uh, factory farmed version of humanity, if you will. I mean, I don't remember all of it myself. I just have really limited spotty memory in a few places. But uh, my understanding is that humans, as they are now on this planet, started about 200,000 years ago in Southern Africa and then migrated to different parts of the planet. And I think I'm not aware of any time during that period that there wasn't this duality consciousness of good against evil to some degree. It's just that it's been intensifying for a long time. And now the very small group of individuals and families that's running the show thinks that they're getting near a, a culmination of the whole program that's been going on for so long. And they think they're going to be able to destroy all life on the planet. And that's a simple way of understanding all the different sub agendas right now. They're all part of that. And can you help us understand why there would be even as a goal to exterminate all life? Like, obviously, if you're the one wanting to achieve that, that includes yourself. So what can you elucidate about that? Well, you know, I'm not at any kind of infallible point where I absolutely am guaranteed to be right about this stuff. But after a long time of looking at it, I think what's happening above the whole level of money and power and all that stuff, which motivation is being supplied by the people above that. At their level, it's not about anything to do with money. And I think it's a ceremonial sacrifice. Um, and they feel that by doing it, it's the old doctrine of, of sacrifice that's in many scriptures. And it says, if you kill an innocent being and you do it just right, according to the right steps, then God's going to be really happy with you. And you're going to get a lot of spiritual benefit, especially the more innocent the being that you kill is. This is actually in most scriptures in some form. And so um, they believe in that. It's completely sick and satanic, but they believe it's true. And that if they do the right sacrifice by the numbers exactly right, that they'll, and throwing themselves on at the end, the sacrificial animal that they see is all of, all the biosphere on, in the earth. That is the biggest victim they can find, at least here. And that gives the most spiritual benefit. And if they throw themselves on, on at the end when they did it right, they'll merge into some kind of a cyberspace condition and uh, get to live with the dark power that they're worshiping forever. And that's their goal. That's how I see it. And I'm, I'm in agreement from my own observation that what is portrayed as transhumanism and in a lot of cases played up in mass media as the only solution to the problems plaguing humanity Mm -hmm. that that's actually seeming like a trap. And could you speak more on maybe the transhumanism's dark side and what a lot of people who might actually find it to be appealing might be overlooking? I think they're considering it as one of the steps toward the extermination agenda. You know, enslavement comes first, moving to robotics away from humans gradually. And... um total control, total awareness of what everybody's thinking and feeling, um, and then elimination of life uh, concurrent to that. I mean, that part's happening now. The, the kind of changes they're making to the biosphere are not the revocable kind. They're the, they're the total kind where species and insects and all different life forms are disappearing. Microorganisms are being changed. I mean, it's not what you would be doing if you just wanted to get rid of 90% of the population and keep the place for yourself, they're doing what they can to completely make it unlivable. And I think the transhuman ideas are, are on the way to that. I see the same thing as you, especially because when we're talking about, I guess, uploading your consciousness into a computer to live mm -hmm. forever, A, it's, dispe it's ignoring the fact or obscuring the fact that we already are forever. Yeah. <laughs> and that what life actually is, is a continuity of change. Whereas if you're trying to create some sort of permanent closed state system that 
will never, I guess, end, then that is a lot like saying it's the opposite of life because it doesn't evolve. It's just a, a permanent loop circuit. It's a counterfeit of where we actually came from that doesn't change and, and that we're going back to and it never has changed. But the one they're making is not the real one. And on the innocence thing that you brought up when describing the sacrifice agenda, do you think that that's part of why people are basically distracted and dumped down from childhood? That to a certain degree, a lot of the population that has not shaken themselves up out of the sleepwalking is somewhat innocent to it? Um, I think the dumbing down program in all its different forms is just to make sure we don't get in the way and derail the sacrifice before it's too late. Because they know at the top levels, they understand we have much more potential power than they do. Because there's a law that says anybody that carries malice for any life form or anything is restricted to the lowest levels of power. And we're not necessarily carrying that spirit. So if we ever woke up even a little bit, we'd be functioning from way above where they are. The the only way they can look intimidating and impressive is if we're just totally unconscious. So they have to keep us there or we would automatically find out how to change this whole thing. That's a very interesting part of natural law that... I guess I already understood, but I hadn't really put it into terms of looking at the situation with how these types of agendas that we'll be speaking about are actually carried out, which is by us, which is by people that don't even necessarily realize the magnitude of the actions they're taking. So, yeah, um, I mean, anybody who does things that are against their real nature doesn't know what they do on a deeper level, even though on the obvious level they do, they planned it, you know, so obviously they're, they're aware of it on the strategic level, but what it's doing in terms of who they really are, no, they have no idea. So I heard you speaking about in your most recent live broadcast about the censorship and that what's happening on the bigger platforms to basically deplatform individuals who speak on some of the more imminently dangerous aspects of the agenda, how, the, how that's happening um, through not just the AI, but through human censorship. So are, are you able to speak on the censorship phenomenon in a way that will make clear to the audience that it's not just people kind of crying over nothing, that there's really something going on with this? Yeah, they, they want, no interference with moving everything into a total global tyranny. And there are certain rules in their system that they have to follow. But if we don't object and we go willingly into it, the conditioning that we get over the media and the fake education and the totally fake science now and the programmed entertainment and all that stuff combined with censoring anybody who says anything unacceptable to them is their idea of how to make us willingly go into complete captivity. What are some of the most common topics that people are facing extreme censorship about that could give us a a list and then we can explore some of those in in depth? Yeah, the unacceptable topics include things like real health information, for example, that's violently suppressed in most of the world now. Uh, certainly in the U.S. and elsewhere. And um, anything about why sovereign countries should be maintained, why that's actually a really important thing. In other words, why borders are good, they're not racist. That That's not acceptable to explain. Um, why biology, normal biology is not a bad thing. I mean, there aren't 85,000 genders. There's male and female, and then there's people who have individual variations from that. But uh, primarily, if it hadn't been just male and female, the race wouldn't exist anymore. And you're not supposed to explain that. Anything about the good values that America was started around, primarily individual freedom, that as long as you don't trespass on the 
rights of anybody else. You should be able to live and think and talk and act as exactly as you want to. Um, you know, every, mutual respect, in other words. It hasn't been fully lived up to in this country or anywhere else that I know of in current times, but it could be. And the fact that it was written down in the founding documents of a country to be lived as soon as we had that maturity, that is a danger to the rulers. So that shouldn't be talked about. They're really attacking Christianity as a religion. Um, and it's not, be, you know, I'm not saying that from the point of view of a religious person, but there are values that are in the official scriptures of Christianity um, that they don't really want uh, to be conscious. They, they want conflict and um, murder and hatred and every, primarily fear and everything. So things that go against that tend to be censored. And what's really going on in all the sub-agendas of the sacrifice, that's not supposed to be talked about. So there's a lot of topics that, that you can be censored for. And now they're moving beyond just cutting off your channel. They're cutting off people who will mention it or listen to it, or they're cutting off the ability to do uh, business with credit cards, um, to buy food, to buy transportation. They're going to try to make it completely impossible to survive, uh, similar to this Chinese social credit score for people anywhere in the world. At least that's what they would like. And you can see that starting. Can you speak on the social credit score since you just brought it up and how that's going in China? Because it's not something I've really delved into on the show. And maybe some of us are already aware of that. But I think it's a very important thing to know about so that that we can stop playing into the hands of those that would want to create that same type of system here. Yeah, I mean, I, I, the the big some of the big tech companies like Google and Apple and um other ones like that, other allies of theirs have gone to China. And for decades now, the idea has been to transfer power from the U.S. to China as a place that would be perfectly set up and as a good foundation for establishing the um, model of tyranny. Because after all, the current Chinese uh, regime came into power killing more than 100 million of their own citizens. Uh, when Mao Zedong was put into power, which Rockefeller called the uh, best example of an advanced society that he could see in the world. And they are already harvesting the organs and selling them from dissidents in their country. We've had guests who are witnessing that whole movement. And um, they're, they really like total tyranny. So, and the, the rulers are in power for life and anybody who objects gets disappeared or killed. So the big tech companies went over there, Google and Apple, to help them institute even more of total control as a model that could be spread to the rest of the world, the U.S. especially, in Europe. And uh, part of that system is keeping track electronically through these conveniences like smartphones and computers and other wonderful advances like that of everything that you do all day and who you talk to, what you say, what websites you visit. And they give you a computerized score of how good of a citizen you are based on your activities. And that shows your intent and your thoughts. And if your score is not really good and you're going to some websites they don't want you to see or they're, you're talking to people they don't want you to talk to or putting out messages that are not highly supportive of the government uh, point of view, then your score is low, lowered, but it's looked at for all of your activities. So your ability to travel is taken away if your score is not high enough. And if you talk to somebody with a low score, your score goes down too. And eventually your, your permission to buy the kind of food you want to eat and things like that, all that will be restricted. Everything will be restricted based on that. So everybody is intended to be monotone type good uh, government servants exactly identical to everybody else. And that's what they're bringing here. So when I look at all this, I see a real unification in the dark forces, for lack of a better term. I don't even like the word dark because, you know, 
actual perfect, perfect blackness is not evil. It's a uh, kind of like the concept of nescience, which is not the same as ignorance. It's where you don't know and you couldn't have known yet. Kind of like how a little kid might smash a bug and laugh about it, not realizing that it just like ended a life for no reason. Right. And so what I'm curious about, because that type of darkness, like the natural darkness is pretty chaotic and it wouldn't be naturally just unified across the board. So what, what, what do you think is the unifying factor for the, the powers that should not be to be acting in concert so well? I, I think it's because it's all coming from one point and there are beings above the human level that are not physical, that are directing the very small number of top level humans and they're running the sacrifice and it, it's very well coordinated and, and very well run. So it is unified. It's been unified for a while, but it shows up in different ways in different parts of the world. But now with the unifying technology, to help people along with what they're doing. Um, orders can be given to all the components of it worldwide at the same time. I think that's what's happening. The metaphor that I like to use for this is the Agent Smith from The Matrix. I don't know if wow. you've seen that film. Yeah, it's good. But later in the film series, after the first movie, well, in the first movie, the agents are able to like possess the body of anyone that's not been, had their mind freed which is another way. It's just an allegory for the way that demonic consciousness actually is able to override humanity that is not conscious. <laughs> right, right. But in the later films, the agent Smith character actually gets the ability to copy himself into anybody that he wants and take over their platform and they become him. So that's kind of how I see the difference between the forces of light and the forces of darkness is that, or the forces of evil not just in this duality system is that the, the good guys and girls, so to speak, are the ones that are expressing their uniqueness and their individuality, which is another word, individuality for being not divisible, undivided. Whereas the, the thing that's trying to take over is like, I'm talking about with transhumanism earlier is this sort of ending of the continuity, ending of change, permanency. And that's what, the agent Smith character really represents because they all become the same. And then the world is this monotone, you know, it ends. Right. Right. <laughs> but what happens with this sort of coordination from potentially spiritual forces beyond humanity, like you're hinting at is we get these events like all over the place where there are, you can even look into the numerology and find all this craziness about, this date and this time and this person's age. And it all lines up in this way that is far too synchronized for, in my opinion, for even the smartest human to come up with and coordinate and plan. It just doesn't even seem possible. And the example I want to use, are you very, I mean, it went everywhere. Are you familiar with this Nipsey hustle sacrifice ritual that went down recently? No. Uh -uh. Okay, good. That means you're not completely <laughs> disconnected from the uh, the mainstream loop pretty well and not getting the programming. But I can't help but notice this because a lot of my friends really put this on blast. But the example is that there was this rapper, a famous hip hop guy that supposedly was going to be coming out with a documentary about Dr. Sebi and alkalinity and health. And before he was supposedly murdered by what is implied to be these forces of uh, evil that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. He would go on talk shows and say things like, if they're going to kill me for this, so if they do, I want everyone to ride for me and everyone to pick up this torch. But if you look into the numbers of this death, it's all completely tied in with Freemasonry. Like, I don't have all the examples in front of me here, but the synchronicity is way too lined up and the publicity of it is way too huge for it to have just been like organic, if you will. Mm -hmm. So it's just, for me, it's an example of this false or savior type of programming that is the same way that Christianity was corrupted, where like the original, the original text, if you're looking at what the, the Jesus character is talking about, it's like, you have this within you. You can do everything I can do and more. Right. But what gets focused on by the mainstream is that 
I am the way, the truth and the life and no one can enter to the father, but through me, which right. is completely taken out of context in my opinion, that is really meant to be that like, we all have that within us to be that. Right. Yeah. I completely agree with that. It was just the church wanted a monopoly and they wanted business and they wanted everybody's money in real estate. So the, the teaching had to be geared to that so that it would help them get members and keep them. So speaking of the church, the other big thing that happened during this year's season of sacrifice, because if you pay attention to the, the dark occultists, what they're doing, they tend to do these big, heavy duty heartbreakers, as they call them. And then like, even they'll use the hashtag heartbreak, they'll put it on the newspaper cover, like this is all an attack on your heart. Earth is even an anagram of the word heart. It's the thing that's most important to be like paying attention to is your heart. But they do this uh, Notre Dame fire that also to me looks totally like a staged event. Not that it didn't actually catch on fire, but that it was all this and the Nipsey thing, both occurring during the 40 day window between March 21st or 22nd and the beginning of May, which you can go and see throughout especially recent decades, so many sacrifices and false flags and attacks and things like that happen in that window. Not all of them, but like a huge, there's always going to be something in that window of time because that's the time that they consider to be the most fertile for generating this type of sacrificial energy. Are you, have you seen that pattern as well? Maybe you can clarify a little bit more with the pattern that you're talking about. Well, just that, in the springtime between like, especially they like to do stuff around 420, especially mm -hmm. which also happens to be Hitler's birthday. But there's this 40 day window of time where there's always a deluge of this type of false flag action and yeah. sac sacrifice action that's in the springtime specifically. And right. You can kind of chart it on a map. Around Easter too. And yeah. Yeah. I've noticed the same thing and there they're really into numerology and, um, you know, specific symbolism of everything they do, dates, locations, um, all that kind of stuff. They're, you know, very um, detailed as far as the rules of what they feel that they have to carry out. So that's true. And Leo Zagami is probably one of the most knowledgeable people on the real workings happening in the Vatican and Rome. Uh, his idea was they had to burn out the cathedral at the right time in order to clear the energy of eight or 900 years of specified focus and prayer that was happening there in order to bring in a, a different focus of it for the future and redo the architecture and the whole thing. And those cathedrals are actually built on ley line points specifically. Right. Yeah. And so they're actually generating all that energy right and pl putting it right into the planetary energy system by building them on this huge network like they do. So I, I think I already know the answer to this, but like, what is the replacement? What is the Vatican planning on or the forces that are colluding with the Vatican worldwide? Are they planning on evolving the Vatican, the church, the, the religion of the world? They want a one world religion and They'll pattern a lot of it on Islam for the moment, but then when they're through with that, they'll sacrifice Islam too and just go toward tyranny without any specific name. I think I can agree with that. Are you aware of any connections between Islam, Christianity, and Judaism that might be predating what we see with the the schism between those three religions? Because my my looking into this kind of hints at the fact that maybe these were actually all one system originally that got fragmented well if you look at the old testament and um which i've read a few times all the bible and and it's um a lot of it is very similar to modern fundamentalist islam i don't think they had any communication but um they're both based around we're the religion that's right everybody else should die and Islam is more violent than Judaism was, but when Judaism started, there were many cases of God supposedly telling the Hebrew people that, well, this, this group of people living on this land over here doesn't matter. Just kill them all. 
kill their kids, kill their animals, burn their fields, cut down their trees, every, as much destruction as you can do. And then I just give you this land because they, you know, they don't matter anyway because they're the wrong religion. And in the Old Testament, it, it justifies killing people who, who pray to false gods. That's another way of saying the wrong religion. And I, th- my feeling is that there really are beings like that who will tell you stuff like that. I don't consider them any kind of ultimate God, but they may be fourth dimensional beings that have huge egos and want to have people worship them. That's what they're really into and killing and justice. And they're always justified and they kill the people with the wrong religion. And that went on for a long time. It's discussed in the Old Testament and justified as something wonderful. But what they're celebrating with that, and I'm not against Jewish people at all. I totally am not into, I'm not against anybody. But the, in the scripture, it's definitely talking about, you know, killing people for adultery, stoning them to death, which Islam likes to believe in now. And also for homosexuals, you have to be stoned to death. Um, this is God's word, not any man, supposedly. That's why I don't think that was any ultimate God that said anything like that. That was a really nasty, demonic creature that is very impressive and can do so-called miracles and things like that. So the average person thinks if somebody can, you know, light up the top of a mountain or something, they must be God. But, you know, there's just a lot more to it than that. And so what's sacrificed with the people escaping from Egypt and everything that involved the murder of all kinds of children and animals and this so-called God that ordered it was saying to Moses and the others, don't worry, I'm going to fool the ruler so that he'll be dumb and won't do the right thing so that I'll be able to show how great I am and kill all the kids and animals. And it's going to be wonderful. And don't worry, because you're the ones I like. That's very similar to Islam. And then later on in Christianity, which was built around the presence of Jesus when he was really walking around in physical form. And the the heroes before that, most of them were just all great killers and they killed the right people. So they were really worshiped, you know, and some of them weren't even very good people like King David and stuff that uh, had his friend killed so he could get his wife and stuff like that. They weren't like any saintly type beings. But then when, when Jesus came and, um, was giving the teachings that he was, he was actually seen as a big threat to the church because he was saying mostly stuff that's not in the Bible. And a lot of the stuff that is in the Bible is edited and and changed. Um, They changed his teachings into, well, you better join this church because all the others are, are wrong and you don't, you want to go to heaven and everything. So, you know, you have to join this one group. And I, I don't think in real life that he ever taught religion at all. But he was in a higher place of consciousness that was more unity. And and I think that his purpose was to show people how to, where they came from, how to live while they're in a physical body in terms, including taking care of it, healing it, not miraculously, but just by everyday lifestyle changes. And I thought, I think he taught a lot of that, some of which is in the scene gospel of peace in part. And also how to get back to where they came from. And then the church twisted it and made it into a way of collecting money and real estate. And they based it all on fear, where his teaching was all based on not forgiveness, because that's saying, well, you know, you're really bad, but I'm really great. So I'm going to forgive you for all the terrible things you really should be punished for. And that's forgiveness. It was based on, look, that's all in the realm of karma, you're something that's not even there. You're, you're wrapped up in that because of ignorance right now, but that's not who you are. And who you are is something great. The same as where you came from in the image of God is not physical. And you're actually the same thing as your origin and you can get back to that. And it's not like I'm really great and worship me. It's like, you're really great. Not your ego but what you originally were and will be again. And then with Muhammad later on uh, in the 600s, 
when he, first of all, I don't even know for any certainty that what's written about him was accurate because it didn't happen while he was alive. It was written later. It was all oral transmission before. But if it's true, then the story is that uh, he was born supposedly in Mecca, but there's some question about whether that was actually Palmyra or not. But, but saying it was Mecca, there were hundreds of religions there all cooperating and getting along and appreciating and supporting each other. And they even used the same building uh, to put their statues in and do their ceremonies and worship and everything. And then Muhammad was a uh, caravan manager and uh, apparently a very good business person, a good person and very responsible. And he had this experience with a what seemed to be a supernatural being of light in the story that we have anyway. And the, the being said, you know, yeah, you've done really great as a caravan manager, but now I want you to be a prophet and start a new religion. And Muhammad absolutely did not want to do that. And he was going to kill himself. And he went up on a mountain to throw himself over a cliff because that wasn't his idea of what he wanted to do with his life. And um, the, this being, which he considered to be an angel, showed up again and said, no, you really shouldn't kill yourself. I need you to do this work. And Muhammad's family said, yeah, that's right. And uh, Bill Warner is a reference for all this stuff that can show you in original scriptural text where the backup for each detail is. It's not anybody's opinion except the scripture, you know, of, of the life of Muhammad. And so the angel said, okay, you're going to be the prophet. And in, while he was in Mecca, if that's where it was, he was cooperating with the other people and the other religions and saying, well, you're, you really have the wrong religion, but I don't have to kill you or anything. I'm just letting you know that your relatives are going to go to hell and this kind of thing. And eventually that got irritating and there were fights. Nobody died, but he was thrown out and um, he went to Medina. And during that whole, I think it was 13 years, I forget whether it was 13 or 10, I think it was 13, that he was in Medina. He only got a hundred and some followers and that's not many per year. So when he went to Medina, he changed strategy, probably at the instigation of the angel and got into the gang strategy and started attacking non-Muslim groups, primarily Jews and other people and saying, you know, you have free choice. You can either join us or not, but if you don't, we have to kill you unless the, we take slaves and sex slaves and stuff. And that was their business. And he got a lot of helpers because he promised them a portion of what they stole. And it was very successful. And virtually everybody in the area decided, yeah, given those choices, I think we'll join. And everybody became either a slave or dead or a Muslim. And that was his program. And he said, God wants the whole world to become Muslim. And anybody who doesn't convert should die. That was his direct teaching from Allah. And that's why they started invading other countries as soon as he died, which I think was in 632 or so. And it's, it's continued till then about 270 million people or so have been killed in that crusade so far. So they've each had their differences. And I don't have the reference for this, but I, my looking into these subjects in the past has led me to infer that even the Vatican and Rome has had a hand in the setting up and creation of Islam itself, that it wasn't really, you know, the story that we get isn't really the full story. And that's often the case. And I've seen the same thing when it comes to the Protestant Reform reformation for Christianity, uh -huh. that there's evidence that that was funded on both sides by the Pope. Yeah, I don't know. I do know, though, that the, the Pope and the Vatican built big walls and defended themselves against the Muslim invasions. That's why they built the huge walls that they've got, a couple hundred feet tall. So if they were all in cahoots, that would not have happened. Perhaps yeah. not in cahoots, but that the divide and conquer strategy 
the first part was to just get everyone fighting each other and make sure you've got a big wall. <laughs> I mean, that makes sense to me. Yeah, I'm sure that's right. But but they were worried that the Muslim movement that they created would overtake and and destroy the Vatican. And they were fighting against that. And now um, the current Pope is a very strong supporter of Islamic fundamentalism that would take over the world. He supports it. And I don't, I don't think he started anything with it, but that he's a globalist, you know, tyrant who wants one world religion, one world government. Uh, everything in tune with what's acceptable to the ruling class. And, and in, in saying all that history of Islam, that's nothing against anybody who's a Muslim because there, there are huge numbers of Muslims that don't believe that everybody else has to be killed, but their scriptures do. And there are a certain percentage that follow those. And those are the ones that are doing the mass waves of rape and vandalism and murder across Europe right now. It's exactly per the scriptures. And the same thing with ISIS. The head of ISIS has a doctorate in Islamic studies and is doing it exactly per the dictates of Muhammad. So I'm not a big in, fan of religions in general. I mean, those are some of the examples of why. Right there with you. <laughs> and then when we talk about this theoretically the same as some people call it, desert sky god that the Abrahamic religions are talking about. Yeah. Uh, the fact that it's, I, I see it as a horned god. I connect it to the Baphomet symbol in occultism. And that's because in a lot of depictions of Moses that you'll find from, the, from long ago, he's actually got horns. He's wearing horns or there are horns coming out of his head. And yeah. they sacrificed the horned animal, which is the goat. That was one of the primary sacrificial things that would somehow invoke whatever entity it is right. that they were talking to and calling God. So right. what, why to go back to why I see there being a connection between all three though, is that there are relics that have been found in North and South America that show the cross, the, the star and the crescent moon all together. And mm -hmm. in a very Those similar old, form. Symbol, old, old symbols. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe it, what it is that it was before is so far different than what we get out of this divided version now that it's unrecognizable, but it's an interesting yeah. thing. Well, current, you know, if, if the Hebrews were active in, you know, being the chosen people to the extent that they wanted to take over countries and stuff now, then that would be an issue. They're not doing that. And the Christians are not doing that. At the moment, it's the people following fundamentalist Islam that are doing that in the hundreds of millions. Um, that's an issue. And it's being directed from above Islam by the global rulers for a, a temporary boost toward where they want to go. Um, I think that the power behind tyranny and destruction and death and all the things that they constantly justify because... After all, you're only killing the bad people that God doesn't like, right? Um, the power that's directed that from the beginning, I think, is the same. And all the people who are enforcing it are victims of it, too. Well, it does kind of go both ways, though. While, you know, America isn't quite in the expansionist mindset that maybe Britain was whenever it was colonizing everywhere, where things were being really done in the name of Christendom. Nowadays, we still have a population of over 300 million people being taxed that yeah. directly supports the, the duality itself through the bombing and stuff. Like, yeah, I mean, that's sure. never really helped the situation at all to go in no, carpet bomb. But remember, that's not the general population. That's the control structure that's, that's dominating it right now. True. So, they feel like they have no choice but to pay the taxes. Right. Which are connected most, to that. most Americans are, did not want to kill Gaddafi and his family. You know, they're just watching television. It's the people who orchestrated that were in, in the government and above it and have been using the resources of, of America for something really bad. That's true. Have you seen the connections between the European Union's founding and the and Nazis that made it out of Germany? Because sure. that's an interesting topic, too. Yeah, not just into the EU, but into America. 
I mean, America brought lots of Nazi scientists and doctors and insane people over to continue their work in America at the end of the Second World War. A small number were killed after Nuremberg, but most of them were brought over as scientists and to continue the same system here. And yeah, the EU is directly connected. In fact, Junker or Junker, who's I think the one at the top position in the EU now, was apparently uh, connected to the some of the most powerful people in in the Third Reich. That's a pretty important thing to keep in mind because that really explains how we got the some of the more I guess for lack of a better word sickening type of programs that came about in the 50s and 60s. I mean, we, off air, we talked a little bit about my grandma who just recently passed, but I, she was one of probably thousands, if not, who knows, maybe millions of people that had their minds assaulted through electric shock therapy and crazy drugs and were basically shattered as a person, at least for a time, over what was supposed to be healing. Right. Yeah, the whole medical system is com- based on the same dark energy and and dark i don't mean a color dark absence of light you know and understanding and perception that sort of thing but i i don't i don't blame people in any country for being unconscious you know it's like uh iran for example is one of the countries that was conquered by islam as after muhammad died the point was to conquer the world that was the objective so that everybody could go to paradise. Iran was one of those countries. They had a great, much higher culture before that. And the, most of the people there right now don't have any bad ill will toward anybody at all. They, even with all the bad things that the American government has done, most of them really like America. And there are movements there to break free of the religious tyranny that they're under at the moment. So, and in America, most of the people here didn't want to go and torture and kill people in Vietnam or in Iraq or anything like that. That was all fraud perpetuated by the government, weapons of mass destruction and false flag attacks in the Gulf of Tonkin, stuff like that. So I don't, I don't blame really the people of any country. They're just not, not awake yet, you know, so they fall for these things. The ones at the top have been perpetuating it. So I have a question now oriented towards solutions and we don't have to exhaustively cover the solutions yet because there's plenty more issues to look at, especially as we're about to move into the, the segment of the show that's not on the mainstream channels, the, uh, the subscriber section, kind of like you've got the, the divided sections, right? Well, but, you, you want to be careful about where you broadcast, even what we've already talked about. <laughs> that's because- true. That's true. One, of, one of the things that's absolutely forbidden is any accurate information about Islam. Anyone who tries to talk about that now in Europe, they're going to prison for it. Which is amazing because we're just talking about stuff that anyone can go and find out for themselves just by looking it up themselves. I'm saying if you recite part of the Islamic scripture, you can go to prison unless unless you're saying it's a religion of peace. That's OK. <laughs> well, I'm not worried about going to prison. We'll see what happens. But yeah. solution wise, what can we do to help lift up others in consciousness? Because I, a lot of times, you know, just talking about the problems to anyone that's not open to at least think about it, that doesn't work. So where can we really lift up our brothers and sisters? What's a good way to do that? I think, you know, although we have to do some physical things, like if if they're trying to do something to your town that's really deadly to the people, like the 5G rollout and stuff like that, you might have to try to talk to your city council members or things like that. But th- that's not really what I see as the most effective healing of the whole situation. Um, there's a physical levels of the world, things going on in the world that you see through your eyes and pick up through your senses. And that's a very limited, narrow band of what's happening. Um, There's a whole unseen realm, which is much, much bigger. Everything is generating energy. You know, the the 5G, for example, and the 4 and 3 and 2 and 1G microwave transmissions are designed to be as harmful as possible. That's the purpose of them. 
but that's not the only kind of frequency there is. That That's a very limited dark side one. On the positive side, every human is generating a subtle and potentially more powerful frequency permanently. If that becomes conscious to a greater and greater degree, I think by the effect of resonance, it can totally change the negative frequencies of the rest of it that we see. And that's far more powerful than anything you can say. But it takes some work. You have to actually do it. It's not not a belief system. Exactly. B- belief systems are BS. <laughs> well, they're, they're distractions because they, they make you think that you don't have to do the actual work. So what is some of the actual work and what is the key frequency? You know, what is the, what is it that's going to boost up that organic human frequency so that people listening can put that on their, you know, intention list and start making moves towards it? I think before what we're putting out now, which is a chaotic type frequency that's going out from us because our thoughts are all over the place and our emotions are all over the place too, without our, out of our control. Before that can be changed and made coherent and powerful, we have to become aware of where it is now. And most people don't pay any attention to the thoughts and emotions going through the mind constantly, 24 hours a day. And every one of the thoughts that comes up has an emotional counterpart. So before those can be made productive and harmonized, they have to become conscious. So I'd say, and, and to do that, you can't stay tense and scattered all the time. You've got to get some relaxation. And I don't mean the kind where you lose consciousness or fall asleep or things like that. I'm saying wide awake, deeply relaxed at the same time. Learn how to do that and hold that state even while you're physically active in conversations all the time. I mean, the meditation, dedicated meditation time is great, but it's a preparation to make the rest of the day and night the same, no matter what your physical body's doing. And then that what you're generating starts to um, become really powerful in a positive sense so it's kind of like finding the neutral it's not that you need to be overboard on the whole like love and light train and even ag- aggressive in people's face about it or because that can get you like worried even when it's not successful but that it's almost i, I really like what you said the relaxed but awake and alert that is the real balance state i i would think yeah, we're carrying around so much tension, we have no idea. And it goes along with the emotional states that we're keeping subconscious so that we won't have to look at them. And the idea, that's why drugs are so popular. Because anything that can make you unaware of what otherwise is bothering you, that's what I would define as a drug. Whether it's a physical substance you know, uh, that you're using for that, that just makes you think everything's great without dealing with it. Um, or a power trip over another person or this big thing that, you know, telling yourself that you're really great compared to everybody else or hating the people who are doing the geoengineering or the, the climate change hoaxes or the federal reserve or, you know, one religion hating the other. Those are all drugs. So the other attitude, instead of taking a drug, is wanting to become aware of what's bothering you and keeping you living in tension all day, every day. Okay, so this is something I've thought about. So are you are you saying that actually part of the reason why we're allowed by the controllers to have the the communication with each other and for some of this information about what's harmful to us to be actually leaked out on purpose is so that people will kind of get scared of that and accelerate the damage that's done by it. Yeah. Fear is, is the theme because when people are afraid they're weak and that's why the church wanted people to be afraid of everything, including God. You know, if if you're bound to an authority by fear, you look for a chance to rebel. 
and you you can't hold on to any real devotion at all. And the Bible is full of stories of people being real devoted for a while and then just falling completely away. And it's because you can't do it by fear. What you do by fear is scatter your energy and become pretty much manipulatable and weak. So, and it's being used not just by religion, but by science and fake science. I mean, the kind they have now and by government agencies and by, you know, groups that control other groups. They, they always like to use fear, but that's not where the real power is. That's uh, You can use it as long as people are unconscious. But once they start waking up to a certain degree, they're less susceptible to fear. And they eventually realize that no matter what happens, there's nothing that makes fear mandatory. It, it doesn't make you stronger or better able to defend yourself or, you know, quicker to do something or more devoted to something good. It, it's just useless, except to the people that create it. I think really the only use for it is in the true survival sense. Like if your body gives you a fear signal because there's a tiger cha charging at you, that's... Adren adrenaline and fear are not the same. I guess that's a good point because you can even handle that situation without fear and you probably would do better even without the fear. Think of the fastest runners like in the 100 meter dash, how, how afraid they are when they set the world record. They're not afraid. The toughest martial artists that move like lightning are not angry or afraid. And they're really fast. So like the whole idea that the dark side makes you stronger, that they want you to think from Star Wars is really not right. It makes you stronger in a self-destructive kind of way. So you can do little things like that others would consider miracles, but only because they're awake, they're asleep and they think that's impressive. You start waking up and some being of light appears to you that can set mountains on fire. You say, you know, I'm busy. Why do you need to be talking about this? This is nothing. These things don't matter. You change somebody's heart to be kind and um, self-aware. That's a good miracle. So there's stuff about, you know, raining down rocks on people or whatever. That's just dumb. And that doesn't come from any good power. So what I want to say, especially in light of all the subjects we covered in the first part and leading into the second, that my experience up to now, and I'm no authority on anything, okay? We're, we're each an authority on what our experience and impressions are in our life so far and what we remember, what we think we've learned. But it's all subjective. And I'm always looking, you know, to be inspired by people who have learned a lot more than I have. But my honest impression from this part up to now is that the reality that everything and everyone came from is beyond the most beautiful and am amazing thing that we can imagine. And I don't even think it can be defined or described in words adequately. And it's just, it's all beauty, love, harmony, exhilaration, ecstatic, constant feeling and beyond that um i to me at this point my feeling is that's the only reality and i agree with that saying that david Icke came up with um infinite love is the only reality everything else is illusion i don't think it's meaningless illusion i think it's a self-generated dream from that one being that's the only real being in the form of every one of us and it's the reason that we have unlimited potential. And this is so far from belief. I mean, we were talking about different belief systems and the harm that they've all done before. But I want to clarify that I'm not against any person in any belief system. I think everybody who I see them as is the original being. I think they're pure spirit, uh, temporarily giving themselves a costume for a particular experience and a mind, but who they really are is the important part of this self-generated movie. And even though it's a movie, it's important what we do in it. So if we go along with drugs, which means anything, an idea, a substance, whatever, to make you unaware of where you're out of harmony with reality, 
that just postpones getting to feel like you are meant to feel. And that I would encourage anybody to be brave. And see, that doesn't mean going out and fighting physical bad guys, although you may have to do it defensively. Uh, I'm not a pacifist. And if somebody attacks you, you should defend yourself and your family and whoever else needs your help. But that's defensive. That's not going out on a, you know, mission to kill all the bad people or something. That's a big mistake because where the power is, is not in that kind of outward campaign. Um, it's been done throughout world history so many times and billions of people have been killed and tortured and everything. And it didn't fix anything. You know, it just kept the same uh, back and forth um, cycle going over and over and over again with more suffering. But we're carrying, every one of us is carrying around a, a weapon in the good sense, a tool that can bring us back in harmony with who we really are and start affecting everybody around us, even if we don't do or say anything obvious. It's so powerful, whether it's deflecting chemtrails or uh, stopping uh, hatred between races or religions or belief systems or social classes or anything like that. We have the ultimate secret tool and it's, it's not accessible via any belief. It's accessible via actual work and change inside yourself, which that's where the real courage is required. And every single one of us has it as soon as we get to the point of wanting to actually experiment, see what it can do. So I'm just encouraging you, you know, dig inside yourself, question everything, um, become aware of the thought patterns that are controlling your life right now and leading to all your beliefs because ultimately beliefs are no longer necessary when you get to direct experience and um we're all we're all working on the same stuff so i appreciate everybody that was really beautifully said and a great finale i would say <laughs> yeah i just want to encourage everybody it looks kind of grim in the world right now and and so many people are being brainwashed to carry out our own execution, which is really what the rulers would like us to do. But we could do the opposite. And if, if you want to be part of that, uh, it's open to everybody. So uh, what are your websites again? And how can people get into the Planetary Healing Club? Yeah, the main website is lostartsradio.com. L-O-S-T-A-R-T-S radio.com. We have a news review show at 4.30 Pacific, 7.30 Eastern once a week on Saturdays. Everybody's welcome to that. Planetary Healing Club meets right half an hour after that. You can get to that via planetaryhealingclub.com. And that one is on a private platform that is not subject to censorship as easily. And we talk much more openly about everything there. That's planetaryhealingclub.com. You can check that out. And um, then the original show, the guest show, is on Sunday afternoons and that or evening. That's six o'clock Pacific, nine o'clock Eastern, and there's all kinds of amazing people on there, including a lot of the ones that you've talked about today. Yeah, I affirm that it's a great show, the guest show. Uh, one more question: Is the Lost or is the Planetary Healing Club accessible? Uh, are recordings available for someone who becomes a member of that? Yeah, we have members in different parts of the world where the meeting time, the live meeting time is just too difficult for them to come to. So once a person becomes a member, and I want to talk about that for just a second, then they have access to all the archives back to the first uh, show meeting. And since I want their participation, Planetary Healing Club is an active, you know, uh, group support session to do whatever you can with your personal health and energy and consciousness, but then join the effort to change physical events and situations and ecosystems in the world for real, not as a belief. And um, I'm not really, you know, to, to keep doing what we're doing, we're, we need to generate some kind of money. And I don't want to push a product because there's such a strong psychological pressure to say things about a product because of the money. And I, 
really don't want to do that. Um, I've got an opportunity to become an affiliate right now with uh, a great site, which is freshandalive.com and Ken Rolla's products, which are wonderful. But I'm not even sure if I'll do that because if I recommend something, I want it to be because it's good. And yet we need money. We're, we're below survival level with Lost Arts Radio right now. And we also have projects in mind, which include physical construction of a school in some form that I was shown a lot of what we need to do with that. That's really expensive and we're not selling anything. So I had the idea of charging a little bit of money, $25 a month to people that want to be part of Planetary Healing Club and quit whenever they want. They, there's no commitment. And it all goes to the nonprofit uh, corporation that we set up which will build the school and do other projects like that if it's meant to be successful and, and you know, do our projects physically. If not, we'll keep doing what we can on the internet for as long as we've got that. But that's, that's the club dues and as I say, no commitment, but that's what that money's for. And it's to try to keep us on the air, you know, for as long as we can. Well, people, if you cancel your Netflix subscription, you'll have half the money for Planetary Healing Club right there. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And Netflix is doing some very un unusual things right now. Well, before we open that other can of worms, I'll just say thank you for being <laughs> with me, Richard. And thank you for being a trooper through the scheduling difficulties we had, uh, really more on my side. But it was awesome to talk to you. I've learned a lot and I look forward to the next time we can connect on air sometime down the road because I'm sure we'll have more things to be optimistic about by then. I, I really yeah. feel it. Yeah, thanks for the invitation. It's always great to get to talk to you, Chance. This was wonderful. So thank you. you know what they say another day another deep dive into the dark underbelly of our collective shadow yes this episode was for sure an exploration into some things that many of us don't really want to look at or think about and when it comes to <laughs> exploring our own situation as americans many of us are americans i know a lot of you out there aren't let's just say not americans but western culture itself I think we need to be real about how we even got into this situation. And first and foremost, it occurs to me that what we call democracy isn't even democracy and that the American system itself was actually set up by secret societies. I actually question whether or not what we consider to be the principles America was founded upon were ever really the full intentions of the founders because a lot, if not all of those guys, <laughs> George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, the whole lot, they were involved with Freemasonry and other secret fraternal orders that came right out of Europe, came right out of England specifically. And I personally question the validity of all that. And first of all, like what we know historically about the American Revolution is that it was supposedly a miracle that the colonies were even able to resist the invading army. Am I right? A ragtag group of militia somehow defeating what was supposed to be the most highly trained military force in the world. And let's look at it like that and just think, well, if you wanted to set up a future where one country could become the world leader, but actually be accepted by the people in that country as the world leader and have those people in that country think that they're free, well, the American Revolution would have been a great way to do it. If the leadership on both sides were actually in cahoots and they could coordinate those battles so that it seems like one side won over the other, you know, those troops aren't going to know the difference. They're just following orders. And 
the people definitely back then weren't going to know the difference. They didn't have the internet to go and explore the potential for conspiracies. A lot of the common folks probably didn't even know about the secret societies back then, I would reckon. I mean, I don't know. I just look at this whole thing that we're in right now as a continuation of an ancient story of controllers and enslavers wanting to find the best way to extract human energy in the form of wealth and in the form of labor that they could. And let's face it, straight up slavery doesn't allow for minute expertise in various fields of labor at all. We've uh, explored that as a planet with places like, you know, communist places. And in general, when people feel super restricted, they don't perform as well. They don't generate an event quite as well. So to me, the entire system that we're in right now, Western countries, that is, it's the perfect recipe to really just extract all of the imagination possible out of the common people and keep them content with where they're at and not wanting to change and keep the, and a lot of people are actually like rah rah yeah let's support america we should be the police of the world i know lots of you listening right now don't really feel that way but it just occurs to me that the fact that we got nazi scientists over here after world war ii then we have all these crazy alphabet agencies doing who knows what in the shadows mind control programs, secret <laughs> uh, false flag attacks on, to start wars and all that. If we can look back through history in, in recent times and find that pretty much every war that we ever had was started on false pretenses, why would we assume that the first war that initiated the entire country was any different? I think it's all one big ritual to create a, a particular effect that was desired. And it's gone very well. <laughs> There's so many little clues, like even just folding up various forms of American currency and looking at the, uh, the shapes and patterns that are on those currencies. It's quite amazing. So anyway, I just wanted to thank Richard for his contributions to the greater conversation about human freedom and about health and about ending tyranny on planet Earth and putting the brakes on this apparent plan to end all life. Whether or not you want to necessarily go that far in your personal cosmology to believe that there does seem to be a plan like that going on, you have to just observe that this is clearly an extinction level event that's happening on Earth right now. And like Richard said, the changes that are being made to the biosphere are not the kind that are reversible. And I guess whenever you look at Earth as a whole, nothing is super reversible. We're always in a flow and progression and evolution. And I know that in the end, the forces of consciousness, the forces of light and love and expansion are always going to have the upper hand over the forces of contraction and evil and destruction and death. But we have to actually be that force for good in the world and for ourselves if we want that desired outcome. So it's a good time to educate yourself on the various ways that we are all being manipulated, poisoned, and repressed because that gives you the insight that you need to start disent disentangling yourself from all these crazy webs of control. And in the plus extension, we actually talked a lot more about some of these problematic elements of our current society. Specifically, we discussed the military origins of 5G and what we can do to block the rollout of these systems in our local areas. We talked about updating our sense of self and befriending the universal mind. Now, that topic is extremely helpful, something that we did discuss in Richard's previous experience on the show, if you want to go back and listen to that. But befriending the mind is a big deal. I really do like looking at it as sort of an external entity, like a child that you're responsible for. And it's not that it isn't a part of yourself. I mean, technically, nothing is fully external or separate, but you can make friends with this part of yourself that you call mind. You can start to put it to task on solving puzzles and finding patterns that could actually help you transcend the limitations you put on yourself. And we discussed all that and more, including the deep ramifications of the fact that we each project our own reality as the unified individual source. 
We discussed technologies to disperse chemtrail poisons with scalar wave effects. We discussed the topics that Richard shares in his Planetary Healing Club and how to educate yourself to be your own doctor. And of course, good old rounded conversation about reincarnation and transcending the karma loops that we find ourselves in lifetime after lifetime or just in our one individual lifetime, honestly, and a lot more than that. So I hope you did hear the plus extension. You know, you can get it at patreon.com forward slash interverse or go check the show notes for the link to that. And do go visit lostartsradio.com too. If you like what Richard's up to, you want to hear some of the researchers that he's brought on. It's a great place to get in-depth information on topics from the dogmatic Abrahamic religions like Islam and Christianity and Judaism or health information. He shares a lot of things that are helpful to your personal journey and development. So if you feel called, go find him online. Maybe even leave him a nice comment or send him an email. Thank him for being on the show. It's nice when our guests are able to reach out or not our guests, but our listeners are able to reach out to our guests and give them a little boost of love and appreciation for the fact that they came on and shared their time with us. And that's about it for me today. I'd like to wrap this up and get you guys this episode sooner than later. So I'll just say thanks for being with me. Thanks for listening to Interverse. Thanks for doing what you can to bring yourself online as the universal source instead of being stuck in a character that's limited and weakened by all of the divisions and identities that get labeled onto us that in the end aren't really who we are because we are each the supreme being of universal consciousness experiencing itself as awareness of all that is. And if you like the music I played in this episode, go check out Atya on SoundCloud, A-T-T-Y-A. I love this guy. I've been checking him out for like a year. So it'd be great if you also went and followed Atya on SoundCloud. Thanks for listening, everybody. Love you all. And best of luck fighting the powers of darkness by transforming yourself from the inside out into such a powerful and high energy love machine that nothing can actually slow you down weaken you or stop you because it's possible. You have infinite potential. You have infinite worth and you're already great. Everything you've ever experienced is just to put you in the position you need to be in to transcend and evolve to your next level. So let's recognize that even in the midst of examining the darkest of the dark things, realizing that these are all parts of ourself and that when we come into realization of our lower natures, which has a lot to do with our body and what we eat and what we're putting into our root or our furnace. When we come into full realization of the consequences of our behaviors, it gives us all the power that we need to make the healthy changes and become who we were always meant to be, which is the healer of our own personal part of the infinite reality fractal spectrum. So thanks for listening, everybody. I love you all and have a great time out there. Make something cool and be nice to each other. I'll talk to you guys soon.